is one of the biggest misconceptions about rowing. Or handle speed means nothing. That is one of the most useless parameters I've ever heard of. I reckon you guys spend a lot of time in a linear erg. This is where you lose that feeling for going in a perpendicular motion. You have to pull out. If you pull straight, your shoulders tighten up. And that's exactly the position you guys are in. Hello and a very warm welcome. Thank you very much for watching the Arm Training Channel. Today's video is about blade work, body positioning, and how to row effectively in a double skull. Now, welcome here to the by row work floor. This is, on a Saturday, a pretty cool place to film videos for you, my community. Thank you very much for watching. If you have not subscribed, it's a good time to do it right now. Omar El Kamati sent me his video. He rose with the Egyptian national team and he's in bow seat here. And they sent me their video asking for feedback. What is it that they can change? Let's talk about this. So first of all, let's look at their rowing. You see this here? That's, let, let me play the footage. First of all, the scenery is Gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. And the water is flat and calm. I mean, if you look at rowing, you think this is what it is like. So you see, okay, the finish position looks very well synced, but that's one of the common traps. So if you only go for the finish position and forget about the rest and look on the blade work, blade work looks okay, um, somewhat together. Individually speaking, it's not clean at all. And the finish position itself, in terms of timing and synchronizing is okay as well, but it's far from perfect. So let's, before we look at the individual differences, which is going to be the key part of the video, let's look at the obvious things everybody who's more familiar with professional rowing can spot. So you can see the blades are very close to the water. That's a common trap. If your blades are so close to the water, you've got an issue. I'm going to show you on the Spyro Pro later on, that's the version that I introduced on the Biro YouTube channel last week. <laughs> that feeling of going forward, that you know what, it can rest parts of your shoulders and arm weight, that looseness, and that play where you roll this with your thumb, and the blades respond. This is so cool. A prototype of an upgrade kit, if you have a standard Biro Pro, you can actually mount something with inboards only, or blades only, or medium long outboards, or full outboards, depending on the space you've got. And I'm going to use this to demonstrate the issues with the blade work. Before I hop on the Pro, let me show you on the video what I mean. So here, if the blades are so close to the water, you have an issue later on with your body weight distribution. That's what most people miss. A lot of coaches emphasize, hey, blades off the water, blades off the water, but nobody actually talks about why. The why is not so much that you don't catch, uh, a, you don't catch um, you know, choppy water. That's one important aspect. But the more important aspect is how you position your body, because then you end up in a position like this run right here, and your body sits on a seat, but you can rest a lot of your weight on your handles, and it needs a different body weight distribution to have the blades off the water. You can try this out. So if you go forward uh, in, in, in the boat or in a biro with, with full oars too, and you go forward and you have your blades farther off the water, you need a different kind of tension. There has to be more force going through the upper arms and, and, and shoulders than having your arms completely loose. But the moment you approach three quarter, and you're thinking about squaring your blades, which is exactly what's happening now, then you need to redistribute that. So at a phase where you actually want to bring your hands out and up, you have to do exactly the opposite. You have to bring your blades, you have to bring your blades up, which means the hands have to go down, which is a push tension, not a relaxing one. That's what many people don't understand. If you're at the catch, three-quarter slide, what I want to do is I want to pre-engage the lat. And the lat, when it's pre-engaged, helps me to distribute energy from the armpit into the hip joint. It makes my trunk more stable. So if you want to put it in a very simple way, having the blades off the water means your trunk is more stable. And for me, this is hugely important because at the catch, there's not much time for 
redistributing your body weight more on your hands and then back on the seat. Nobody does that, especially not when we talk about stroke rate 30 or plus. And that's one of the main issues both of you have got. Now, it's very convenient to have your blades close to the water in flat conditions like these. So this is why I prefer to row in choppy conditions, because these are more realistic. In my personal perception, I don't have reliable data on that, but I think 80 to 90% of all regattas in the world are held in bad conditions. <laughs> this is a fact for me personally. Reality is these conditions are usually found in training and then surprise, surprise, come regatta day, they're totally different. But rowing is an outdoor sport. It's not a laboratory sport. So blades off the water, not just for the sake of not catching um, choppy water and, and wave, for the sake of having the right lat tension. I recorded a video about lat tension and I will link it in the description below and how to engage your lat. That's so important and I think it's absolutely overlooked. Okay, now you see this very well here. You see the hands point down. That, that stroke in particular has a bit of an issue too because you're off balance. Why are you off balance? I do think because you push down just before the catch. At that stage, you should be releasing. That creates a different kind of stability. I know the back position is an issue, I under, but I will talk about this later. Okay, so your blades had to come off just to be able to square. Now, of course, you're gonna follow that trend. You're not gonna do, you're not gonna be close to the water, away from the water and back down and then ready to start to drive. No, your blade's gonna skyrocket. This is exactly what happens. And of course, the more often you do this per minute, which means the higher the stroke rate is, the more severe these physical influences are gonna be. Which means your blades will be farther off the water the more tired you become, because the more you rest your upper body weight on that. I just enjoyed a couple of 500s yesterday on the bi rower. Um, I'm trying to get back in, in, in competitive shape again. And I follow my own training plan. <laughs> it's, it's, it's tough, but it's so rewarding. It, it's very good. And I found that on the way to the catch, I was prone to almost collapse a bit with my shoulders. Now, everybody is prone to do this. You have to make sure that you sit on your seat and you relax going up. And that's what both of you guys are not really doing. So your blades are not well positioned. Omar, your blades are better, you're in bow. But you will compensate that your, your body weight is not fully on your seat. One more thing, and sorry if I'm elaborating too long on that, but it's important to understand that. That's a very specific rowing technique. As you approach the catch, at that stage, your blades should be off the water and there's a higher ratio of weight on your hands um, to weight on your seat. So a good deal of your overall body weight and tension is on your seat, but a tiny bit is on your hands because your blades need to be off the water. At the catch, you, you have to start to be able to pull and pull on something. Now you can't push something down and pull on something effectively. You, you can try this out, you know, grab a door handle, these European door handles work best, and, and push it down and then pull. Yes, it works kind of, but what if you could let loose and just give yourself a bit more support here, Tedis Major, um, Lat Dorsey, that would be a different kind of connection. You could apply much more force. So anytime you have to add a vertical energy to a horizontal energy, it's going to be a trade-off. This is when on the by rower, you see this little precursor before the main one starts. This is when you add a vertical motion to horizontal motion. So, and that's the reason why both of you have to compensate because at the catch, you just aren't prepared. You are not prepared to pull. Here at the catch, Omar, your upper body is pivoting right with the first part of the leg drive. And stroke guy, I don't know your name, but your, your back overall is, is positioned in a way that is almost guaranteed to cause injuries in the long run. Right now, I think your, your, your um, muscle structure allows you to prevent that, but let the years come and you will have injuries. You need to change your posture. You need to go from very hunched, very round, to stable. doesn't mean you have to have an 
a hollow back, but you need to have a stable back. Right now, you're creating more bends in your back than, than um, anywhere else in your body. So there's at least here there's one, at least here there's another one. So your spine is going to be overloaded. That's a critical issue, in my humble opinion. This is serious. So when you start to apply force, both of you are compensating. Both of you are pivoting too early with the upper body. You see this? There's ah, a bit of rotation upward. If you say, well, it looks fine, what do you want? We're talking about details. These guys want to compete at a higher international level. It's not like, hey, the boat is moving anyway. This is about being highly competitive. And this is where the fine details matter. Also, if you're not highly competitive, in my humble opinion, wouldn't you like to row the best you can? Or would you like to, oh, the boat is moving anyway. Wouldn't you go and grab a leisure boat? It's more, more interesting to be effective and good at something than um, if, <laughs> I mean, chances are, if, you, if you're watching until now, you're interested in it anyway. So I don't have to elaborate on that. So here at the catch, this is the first compensation. And the issue here is that as, as the drive progresses, both of you pivot at different points of time. Because stroke has a, an upper body that is too arched and bow needs to stay in the timing because stroke is losing connection. And this is when both of you use your arms too early. Let's, let's go forward a couple strokes so you can see it better. Where are we? Where are we? Here. See this? You're going legs to arms. At that stage, you could be swinging back a bit more. The upper body should support the arms. All, no, the arms should support the upper body. Not the so upper body should support the arms. By that, I mean it's a timing thing. You can't go legs to arms because the upper body is a stronger lever than your arms. So you should go legs, stronger lever, strongest. Upper body supports legs and takes over and arms support the, arm, the, the, the pull into the finish. I reckon you guys spend a lot of time in a linear erg. This is where you lose that feeling for going in a perpendicular motion. You have to pull out. If you pull straight, your shoulders tighten up. And that's exactly the position you guys are in. So get off the linear erg, spend more time in a boat, or don't row the erg at all, and go running or cycling. It's, it's better than losing your technique. And at the finish, when you pull out, this should be... The main motion is the upper body swing, which should still push in your feet, and then you pull out, just to complete the stroke. The main issue why you're not as quick in a double as you could be is because you are not looking for that resistance point. I just had a very good on-water session 7 a.m. this morning here in Vienna, where my master women's double, they're quite quick. Um, they're working on, on a very similar thing. Um, they're, they're, the time at, at the catch, the timing at the catch is okay, but come the first part of resistance on the blades, the patience is gone, just like in this double, to wait until you have established full force connection on the blades from feet to hand, and then start to drive the boat and propel with the, with the upper body. So otherwise you wouldn't be looking for resistance. That's the reason why your arms bend early. You don't bend your arms early because you think it's right. No, you're looking for resistance on, on your blade. You don't feel that. And something else I think is the case, and it's one of the biggest misconceptions about rowing, or handle speed means nothing. That is the, one of the most useless parameters I've ever heard of. And the reason why I'm being so harsh and strict about this is harsh straightforward as it is. If you go for high handle speeds, <laughs> then you're very likely to cheat subconsciously, not consciously, subconsciously, in order to, you probably get your blade slightly off the water, create more slip because this will increase your oar handle speed. Say, oh, this guy in a team boat has got good oar handle speed and the rest can pull the boat because they have slow oar handle speeds because you don't want to accelerate the boat so quickly because, because you can't. Imagine a quadruple skull or a double skull. You know, one athlete has a quick oar handle speed. Excellent, well done, good oar handle speed. You become quick at the finish. And the other guy stays connected and keeps on pulling the boat. And he's supposed to be the worse of the, you know, the, the bad guy of the boat? Why? He's pulling the boat along. Your oar handle speed is a secondary parameter. The primary parameter is how long can you keep the connection on the blade? That's relevant. So I think 
if you have dealt with you know or handle speeds and, and, and that are parameters like these forget about it look for that point where you where you lose resistance force curve for me are the ultimate measure all right what i'm going to do now is hop on a buy rower and show you precisely what i'm what i'm talking about with the body weight distribution and the blade work so this is the buy pro with the full oars they are detachable so you can only use them as you can also use them as um, inboards only and we're working on something where there are only blades on the outside have as long um, oars or the full oars and the strain gauge is mounted on 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 a rotating axle which means if you don't, if you don't fully square it simply doesn't pick up the entire force that you apply because your blade is not fully squared exactly as in the boat so this is this is a prototype um, i suggest head over uh, after this video to the biro channel on youtube i'm going to link it in the description or to biro.com and this is where we explain more about that okay talking about blade work here now your guy's problem in a double is a very simple one here at the finish you're there and then you kind of become loose so you go forward that way and now you realize oh there's not enough space so you need to go down and if you go down you, you're not in a pull mode so you're here at the catch and then a drive should start but the timing so you do this now once you start a drive this way your blade will go deeper than it should go it will pop back up you could solve this issue with a rental foil it would make you about three percent faster but in the long run for the mid drive you also on top of that need to need to make sure you hold the upper body so you look for the resistance here at the kitchen until you swing together so that swinging together that is huge from full slide to three-quarter slide this is where you need to look for the resistance hold the upper body as stable as you can and then once your hands start to come close to each other then this is where you use your upper body when you are at the finish the question is how should you tap down so the finish is always a bit of a washout there is no such thing as a jump up that is utopia so there's always a bit of a wash that you have to slowly disconnect then of course you feather and then there's not much space here to tap down okay i get this so you wash out you feather then you go forward a tiny bit and then once your hands are above your quads then you've got more space to tap down this is where you actually get the final tap down and it's important not to do this with straight arms but with loose elbows and also i just did this in this this morning's um saturday live session i'm gonna do it again tonight it's saturday it doesn't that i'm recording this video i'm gonna do it again tonight talking about how to keep your elbows loose on a recovery here so you go tap down you square uh, you fetter then you slowly move forward and with loose elbows you tap down a bit more and at the same time you're loose here but you're you're engaged in the low trunk and this is where you have to grow i did a full video on how to use the core with charlie i'm going to link in the description below and then on the way to the catch up to three quarter slide you should still be loose here and now you can do that this it's the ominous way forward where you go with your blade that this is what everybody wants and it's not just for beauty's sake it look at look at what my arms do they go and extend out and then i get this stretch here and this stretch is hugely important because the moment the leg drive starts that engages and that transfers force right into my hip joint it can't be any better i hope it wasn't too loud on the microphone yet okay so once more finish position stability tap down so finish position stability tap down fetter tap down more and now i do this with the outside of my hand mostly i apply the weight go forward loose here stable there in the low trunk and from three quarter slide on i extend my arms a bit more so my blades go into the water Pop. not deeper than it should be you can rely if you have rental foils here you can rely on the rental foils Pop. start to drive and then look for that resistance here here 
together. Look for it, look for it, look for it, look for it, and then boom, go together. For me, that's one of the secrets um, why the Sinkovich brothers of Croatia are so strong. And, and um, we'll see how the season plays out, but they were unbeatable because with all the inefficiencies they had, they were able to use their upper body weight together. And that was one of the secrets, in my humble opinion. Yeah, and one final thought on handle speeds. I'm going to do a dedicated video on that. But for now, if you want to have quick handle speeds and you look at the blades and you wash out, of course your hand's going to accelerate because there's less resistance on your blade. But in the boat, the issue is you do want to have resistance. Ideally, you want to have resistance for as long as possible. Hold resistance. Ah, and then then you release. It's not about accelerating the handle towards the finish. That's, <laughs> there's no such word in English, but it's, it's the wrongest <laughs> thing to do. It just doesn't work. You want to accelerate the boat, but more, if you're interested, let me know. I happily do um, another video on that. Okay. This, this Spyro Pro with full oars, it's crazy. It's so good. It's, it's awesome. Thank you very much for watching. I'm very much looking forward to see you in the next arm training video. If you have not subscribed to it right now and hit the notification bell, the algorithm. The more subscribers I have, the more reach I've got, the more time I can spend on these videos. And now head over to the Byro channel and I've got a new channel, it's called To My Young Self, where I essentially talk to my young self and explain a bunch of things I wished I would have known when I was in my teens and twins and maybe my early 30s. And now that I'm 40, I think I'm a grown-up man and I think I understand certain things and I will probably see them different in 20 years from now, but ever since I was 14, I kept the journal of things I understood for myself and many things I had to understand twice or three times or four times before I actually grasped the full concept. This is a channel where I'm very personal and I'm, I hope it can make a good impact on, 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 on other people looking for answers, just like I was looking for answers, and I'm still looking for answers in many ways. Now, with this being said, I very much appreciate your time to watch this video, and I'm looking forward to see you in the next one. Have a good day. Bye-bye.